Hi everybody. Today we're going to look at my open top 20 long. I've made a change that has made a significant difference in this tank. I'm really happy with it actually. Uh, and it was just sort of a spur of the moment change. And once I was done, it's just kind of one of those moments where I kind of smacked myself in the forehead wondering why I had not done this a long time ago. If you haven't noticed by now, my Madagascan rainbow fish is now in my open top 20 long. And I took him out of my brackish tank this morning. I've been talking about doing that for a while now because he's just way too boisterous and rambunctious in that tank. And it stresses my puffer out way too much. And I just never knew where to put it or what to do with it. So... A day or two ago, the idea popped into my head, like the, the answer's been staring me in the face. Uh, this tank has what I think of as the wallpaper fish, uh, and that's the small schooling fish that swim around the tank, and they, to me, are sort of mobile little pieces of color and interest, but for me, I still like to have a sort of central or key fish in the tank. And I really just didn't know what to do with this tank. And I was enjoying watching the schooling fish. I have glow light tetras in here, and then I have raspora hats as well. And then on the bottom and in the caves, I actually have five uh, very small ancestral species of plecos. So the tank is a little more crowded than it looks at first glance. Um, but I still wanted to put a sort of key fish in there, a feature fish. And I'd considered using my T-bar cichlid because, as you know, if you watch my videos, you know I probably am trying to kind of get him out of that tank too. He harasses my black ghost knife fish too much, uh, etc. But for this tank, I still just didn't really know what to do with it. And I was sitting here yesterday, and I was looking at my poor puffer trying to eat his dinner while this stupid... Um, rainbow fish kept swimming all over the place and scaring him and freaking him out and it occurred to me why don't I just take him out of the tank and put him right in the tank next to it and so I did I did that this morning <laughs> excuse me um, and the moment I did it it just made so much sense I don't know why I didn't think about this before and there's something I want to talk about and there's probably a name for it I'll put it up on the screen if I can uh, if I look it up and find out there is a name for it but as usual this is a spur of the moment video I just felt like shooting this so here we are um, if you're familiar with what dither fish are there is a, there's a, a the opposite of a dither fish is what this fish would be. I guess you could call it a stressor fish maybe. And what it is is a fish that if you've got schooling fish like these raspora hats or these glow light tetras and they're in an environment where there's no stress or no threat at all they really don't school. You don't get much schooling behavior at all and anybody that has schooling fish and sees them schooling around in the tank knows how much more enjoyable it is to see them schooling than to see them just swimming around wherever they feel like it in the tank. So within moments of putting this fish in this tank, as boisterous and aggressive as he seems, he's no threat to these fish at all, but they don't know that. And they immediately group together for safety, which is why schooling fish school. So if there's no threat to them, they don't feel it necessary to school. Uh, you know, again, the moment you put something in a tank that gets them a little bit stressed out, you can see how they're swimming uh, much more tightly now than they ever have before. And the rainbow fish actually makes a nice little addition as a sort of key feature fish in here. Now, I do have to throw in a few little exceptions here and, and you know, things that I don't recommend doing. First of all, the rainbow fish is a schooling fish, and it really shouldn't be kept alone. I've got reasons that it's alone. I'm not going to go into that now. But I started out with a dozen of them. I had six males and six females, and I wound up with one male left and nowhere to really put it or whatever. So I'm just kind of stuck with it. And the other thing I would say is that putting a rainbow fish in an open top tank is a recipe for dead rainbow fish. I have had this rainbow fish in an open top tank for over a year and I've never, it's never even shown any signs of looking like it's going to jump out of the tank, which is the only reason it's still alive. The reason all the other ones are dead is because they were such fierce jumpers, they actually uh, basically banged off the hood so hard it killed them all and this one never did so I just kind of assumed he wasn't a jumper uh, when I needed a fish to put in my brackish tank he fit the bill so he went in my brackish tank now that I want to get him out he's in this tank so it's one of those kind of fish I really don't particularly want it or care for it but it is a pretty fish it is serving a purpose and it is now making this tank a whole lot more interesting 
So again, I really wouldn't suggest keeping rainbow fish singularly, and I really don't suggest keeping them in open top tanks. Uh, for the vast majority of the time, uh, you won't have your rainbow fish for very long at all if you keep it in an open top tank. Um, so the, the real thing I wanted to talk about, though, was the, you know, the fact that it's this sort of anti-dither fish. It's this stressor sort of fish. And that's sort of a, a, an important feature or, or an important factor to think about if you're trying to put together a community tank. And if you're putting together a community tank and you want it to be a schooling community and you have groups of fish the way I do, you need to take things into consideration and you need to build a complete community and that includes the fish that would stress these fish out in, you know, in their natural environment. These schooling fish are around other fish that stress them out. That's what causes them to school. So when you're recapitulating their habitat and their environment, you need to include that fish. Now, you don't need to include one that is necessarily genuinely a threat to them. Again, this rainbow fish isn't going to harm any of these fish, but they don't know that, and it still provides them with that natural sort of animal they need to be wary of and that causes them to school much more tightly together and makes for a more complete and natural looking community tank when you've got schooling fish in it. So I just found that interesting. I knew that and it was one of those kind of things that just never crossed my mind. I hadn't thought about it until the moment I put him in the tank and when I saw it happen you know that's when I just felt like smacking my head and going you know well I don't know why I didn't think of this months ago because it's just so obvious that this is what the end result would have been. Um, and it was almost instantaneously. I got much, much more uh, natural schooling behavior, and the tank looks a lot better. So I'm crossing my fingers that going from the brackish water to the fresh water, um, I think he's probably happier in the brackish water. So we still may get a jumper now that he's back into fresh water. I don't know. Uh, one final note I will make as far as transferring him from brackish water to the fresh water, if you're wondering how I did it and how long I took to acclimate him, etc. I scooped him out of the brackish tank and I turned the net upside down and I plopped him into the fresh water tank. You do not have to take any time acclimating urihaline animals from one environment to the other. That's what they've evolved to do. That's why they're urihaline. I could take him out of fresh water and I don't know if he could tolerate full salt very well, but your average urihaline animal, like a molly for example, you could take a molly and put it right in salt water or marine water and it will be fine. It's just they don't really need any adaptation time. Their bodies account for that. That's why they're urihaline animals. So in his case, I literally scooped him out of the tank and I plopped him into this tank. So for a little teaser for videos coming up, that means my brackish tank now uh, is a little different. My puffer seems to be happier now that he's not in there. I've been working on getting that cleaned up. My little bumblebee gobies have come out of hiding because that fish had been chasing them around as well. So the brackish tank is coming along and that'll be a video coming up real soon. So subscribe if you're not already. You don't want to miss anything coming up. Uh, i got some other stuff on the back burners as well and hopefully we'll get that uh, up and shooting here soon. So thanks for watching this one. Hope you enjoyed and I will see you real soon on the next one.